As you can see, we have uh, young people from all over the country who come together every year through the mechanism of their states to uh, compete in this contest here at the national level. And uh, we are privileged every year to be able to hear the first place winner uh, and hear this speech that won him first place in the, this year's oratory contest. And so this year we will be hearing from the first place winner, Blake Adams of Georgia. <laughs> I'd like, <laughs> like to say a few things about Blake. He's been homeschooled and will be enrolled this fall. It, it's, it's homeschooled. At Kennesaw State, majoring in history, he is here with his mother, Mrs. Melanie Adams, and um, I have a $1,000 check to present him and his award. Blake? And the stage is yours. All right, thank you. This is a bigger crowd than last time. <laughs> uh, in case you uh, didn't hear, I'm Blake Adams from uh, Georgia, and the theme and title of my speech is Truth. Have you ever been lied to? What's more, have you ever lied yourself? Sadly, it's inevitable. Whenever you tell a lie, there is this feeling of relief, even ecstasy at having successfully misdirected the issue from yourself. In fact, you are convinced that it wasn't a lie at all, but a clever riddle, a trick, or a game, such as mankind had genius at deceiving himself. However, over time, the truth begins to weigh down the heart. Your grasp on reality weakens, and guilt blocks out all logical and moral systems until finally, the lie must be believed, even by you, or else you lose the game. In 1973, Roe v. Wade legalized abortion. This effectively assured the annihilation of unborn American citizens and jeopardized the safety of the mothers bearing them. By the end of this speech, at least 21 children will die in America alone. However, the issue of abortion did not begin with Roe v. Wade, but long ago when the value of life was trivialized. This trivialization was personified from 1650 to the early 1800s, in a time span history recognizes as the age of reason. It was here when lies were given the disguise of philosophies, romanticism, realism, existentialism, impressionism, and materialism, just to name a few, all had their day in the sun. It seemed a new philosopher with a new philosophy took the stand every day and declared he had discovered the truth, the very meaning of life. All the isms were cataloged and labeled, each with their differences and flaws, some complicated, others simple. The age of reason came to a close in the early 1800s, leaving in its wake a mixed-up humanity, confused and tired of debating the truths and non-truths of all these philosophies, until all that remained was numbness. This numbness is the philosophy that rules today, and it's called postmodernism, a belief system that states... What you think or what you believe is no better and no worse than what I think or what I believe. Therefore, who can be right? Who can be wrong? There is no such thing as truth. And the only way to know if something is bad or not is if it hurts or if it's illegal. Because America has bought into the ideas of postmodernism, people with no moral compass of their own must default to the powers that be. Is this the right way? Is this the American way? Of course not. It is the prevalent way. Perhaps you've seen yourself the influence of these ideas. So what is truth? Before I answer that, let's go back in time when the suggestion of a mother choosing to harm her unborn child would have been an unnatural, unthinkable idea. In Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary, the definition of truth reads, conformity to fact or reality, exact accordance with what was, with what is, and with what shall be. Now let's move forward to the Modern Heritage Dictionary, where the definition of truth reads, a statement proven or accepted as true. 
I say again, accepted as true. The difference between these two definitions is subtle but deadly. The first definition is strict, specific, exact, to the point, and perhaps even absolute. Whereas the second implies that truth is only true as long as people accept it as true. Abortion is but a branch of the postmodernist root. They cannot say that a child is or is not a human being because, hey, it's all relative. It may be a human to you, but not to me. Abortion is wrong. Murder is wrong, except in the case of rape. Lie. A beautifully, masterfully constructed lie. Truth has no exception. Truth has no relation. Truth is its own, and it is absolute. But I return to the question. What is truth? The truth is that an unborn child is indeed human and therefore sacred. Science proves it. History proves it. Theology, philosophy, nature itself, and human experience proves it. The truth was always clear. But when was it twisted? It wasn't in 1973. Legalized abortion did not happen overnight. It took time. It began with a subtle, whispered lie, couched in the philosophies of the day. It grew in the propaganda of Nazi, Nazi Germany. It festered in the halls of justice and endless debates over slavery. It screamed from the rooftops as Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood perfected their self-theology of a master race. It proliferated in the moral decay of the 60s when personal responsibility was abandoned with the modernization of birth control. And today we suffer the fruit of this little... Whispered lie in the form of a small, lifeless child. So tiny, you can hold her in one hand. Her limbs have been barbarically torn from her body by hand. Or her skin is scorched beyond recognition by a saline injection. Or The base of her skull is punctured by a surgeon's knife, by his own hand. Her mother, she will never be the same again. I conclude with this question. Can we stop the death cycle? Can we legislate a human's rights amendment? Maybe, but it's going to take time. One day I hope to have a child of my own. And I want to be able to tell him, just as my parents have told me, that he is fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. You see, truth is like a whisper. You only hear it when you listen. And though the masses may never listen, it must be said. And it will grow in the halls of justice as we take the abortion mills to the legal front. And it will proliferate as we accept human beings, not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Martin Luther King Jr. And perhaps, in time, we will win the abortionists and liberals and show by our love and by our actions that life is sacred and that truth is absolute.